spend, 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 and we know that's going to ultimately mean tax, tax, tax. That's the biggest takeaway from the Liberal platform, the fully costed platform officially unveiled by the Liberal Party of Canada with just three weeks to go until the election. Now, what's interesting is that the Liberals have been in government for just under four years, which means they've had an opportunity to set an economic course for Canada. And more importantly, through the most recent budget, they've even had an opportunity to lay out projections for spending in the next few years. However, the platform that was unveiled by the Liberals actually deviates from even the budget the Liberal government had been putting forward. Now this budget, and we talked about this earlier in the year when it was released, only promised a $19.7 billion deficit in 2020 to 2021, which would fall to a $9.8 billion deficit by 2023 to 2024. Now this platform is monumentally more in deficit spending. Next year, the deficit would be $27.4 billion. And the year after, $23.7 billion. The year after that, $21.8 billion. And the year after that, $21 billion. We're talking about more than $100 billion in deficit spending over the next four years. And by the way, over $30 billion in new government debt. For a government that will have been in power for eight years by then and racked up billions and billions and billions in deficit spending. Now what's more concerning than this is that what is really the Liberals' biggest ticket item in the campaign, Universal Pharmacare, which could run up to $15 billion, isn't even included in the platform. So that would be an additional expenditure on top of that. And another development in this that a friend pointed out to me is that all of the revenue projections when assessed by the Parliamentary Budget Office are not guaranteed. They're not set in stone. The Liberals are banking on bringing in the revenue they expect, but it could be that if their spending keeps up and the revenue is in fact less than they're projecting, that we are looking at even more, billions and billions more on top of the existing billions in government spending that will be running up deficits. Now we all know the economic harm the deficit spending causes to a country. For starters, increased debt and more importantly, less money that's going towards the services government should be providing. This is an election wish list that the government is putting forward as policy here. The government right now is very much devoted to trying to tell Canadians this is what we're going to do for you, but it comes at a cost and it comes with a price tag. When that old saying, nothing in life is free, was uttered, there's a reason. Even government promises, even political promises, they are not free. They have to be paid for. But the challenge is that people understand the promises. People understand the tangible that's provided, like universal pharmacare. They don't understand as much the idea of deficits. They don't understand debt to GDP ratio. And I'm not calling people stupid. The fact is most Canadians are not economists. And there's a reason for that. Canadians defer to experts and, yes, defer to politicians to make these decisions. But oftentimes we get captivated by whatever the promise is without looking at what went into making that promise happen. In this particular case, spending. And what's interesting is that this is the first election in Canada where the Parliamentary Budget Office has had to cost projections. And the Liberals have bragged that, hey, this platform of theirs is costed by the PBO. And yes, that's true, but all that really is is to look at whether the math adds up. It's not whether it's good policy, and more importantly, it's not whether there is a guarantee of revenue. And it was the PBO that assessed these revenue projections as not entirely certain. So that means that this government will have to make up this shortfall by finding a way to add even more revenue into the mix. And you know what that means? Taxes. We don't know who's going to be taxed or how, but that's the only way the government can make that up unless it's prepared to scale back on spending. But we haven't seen any indication in this platform that scaling back spending is what the government would like to do. I'm reporting right now from New Glasgow, Nova Scotia on my cross-country tour covering the issues that matter to Canadians and talking to the people that matter in this election. We can't do this alone. There's a cost to doing this. If you can chip in to our election coverage fund, please head on over to tnc.news and offer a donation as you're able. For True North, I'm Andrew Lawton.